Hello, everyone. Welcome to this fifth of six coach education seminars that the FIG is offering online. My name is Hardy Fink, and I'm a member of the FIG Education Commission. That commission was appointed by the president in order to inform and advise the executive committee. In this time of the pandemic, the FIG has had to cancel about 70 age group camps and academies for the rest of this year. This online series of lectures is to provide some continuing coach education and to give a brief look into the academies. Most of the seminars, including this one, are modified from academy material. This seminar is about a topic that has always been of great interest to me related to long-term planning. Specifically, the topic is preparing for success by planning ahead. And we are so grateful to have one of the leading researchers and lecturers on this topic. Ignacio Grandi, please join us. Hello, how are you? Ignacio, how are you? Fine, thank you. How is it going with your gym? Is it open yet? Yes, it's, it's open, but with uh, small groups, by special rules, rules according to, to the situation, and only with uh, competition gymnasts. It's crazy to start uh, training with this situation. So good luck to all coaches. Yeah, I can't say that you're lucky, but you are luckier than many, many others around the world. Yes. So let me introduce you officially. It's my great pleasure, really, to introduce Dr. Professor Ignacio Grande. Like many of us that are now listening and speaking, he loves gymnastics and has done that all of his life. He's a PhD and is a professor at the Faculty of Sciences for Physical Activity at Polytechnica University in Madrid. He was for years a bio biomechanic scientific collaborator of the Spanish Gymnastics Federation for both artistic and rhythmic gymnastics. He's been a women's gymnastics coach for 24 years and currently at Maha do Honda, my pronunciation, in Madrid. He has also taught at 18 level three academies and has done so for five of our disciplines. So Ignacio, welcome and thank you so very much for your willingness to participate in this new project and to present this topic. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Hardy. We are going to, to begin with this topic. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Hardy, and welcome to all the gymnastics family to this new seminar organized by the FIG Educational Commission. I want to thank, to thank the FIG for this new opportunity and especially Hardy Fink for his incredible work as expert and uh, always is a reference for coaches for who have learned, learned a lot of from Hardy. Thank you very much, Hardy. And today we are going to, to speak about uh, preparing for success by planning ahead. As Hardy said, we are going to, to speak about long-term planning. This is the principal idea for the beginning. We are not going to, to speak about uh, microcycles or planning one year. We are going to speak about long-term planning, planning the whole life of the gymnast. We have four different parts for this talk. The first part is uh, why plan, the reason for planning. In the second part, we are going to, to speak about the basics of planning. Then we are going to, to talk about what, how, and when to do it. And in the final part of this presentation, we are going to talk about the long-term planning design. If you want to, to design, we, we are going to give you some recommendations. The first part of this presentation is uh, why plan. Uh, I try to convince you to, to develop your own plan for your country, for your federation. In our sport, dreams of success take uh, many years to fulfill. We have to realize that uh, we have to develop an incredible work, an incredible hard work, but also with quality and total develop phase after phase. Another important idea is that we don't have all the time we want. 
time for develop gymnastics is limited. And we are fighting with time every day with our gymnasts. One, uh, one phrase that all coaches say is, I, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time for develop my uh, technical preparation, for develop my uh, physical preparation. Uh, it's real. But it's better if you have all planned, previously planned. Because we have to realize that we have to develop from the basic training to the maximum high level in approximately 10 years. In girls, this is a, a structure for the long-term planning from the, from the British Gymnastics Federation. They have different phases, as you can see in the picture. Um, it's very good to, to see it that you have only uh, 10 years, 10, 12 years in girls to go from the beginning to try to go to the top international level. In men, in boys, with boys, you can have uh, more time, perhaps 12 years, perhaps uh, 13 years, but the reality is the time is limited. You have around 10 years to develop all your program. So in gymnastic, especially, it's very important to have all this work perfectly planned, year after year. Because success in gymnastics is the result of many years of extensive planned work. And this must be planned by coaches, by clubs, by federations. So it's the work of many people. So this talk is not only related with coaches. This special seminar is related with the philosophy of the country, the philosophy of the federation, and also the clubs, coaches, all the gymnastics family must be included in this kind of plan. One important idea is that you have 10 years of practice, an average of 10 years to develop all the plan. So you don't have time to lose. You have to know exactly what to do at every age of the gymnast. So if you have this plan, if you have this map for the coach, you will have better possibilities of achieve the high level performance and you have better possibility of having success in the future. Success does not happen by chance. After every uh, champion, behind them, there are a lot of work. There are a lot of hard work, a lot of training session, a lot of training preparation, a lot of technical preparation. So you have to plan all this work because we are, no, we are not uh, looking for casualty. Perhaps you will have a very, very incredible gymnast, very talented gymnast, and um, with uh, somewhere, he could be in top gymnastics, but it's a casualty. We must not wait for casualty. We want to develop a program, a program that uh, allow the country to have a good international level, but forever, not only having a casualty, a good result. So don't wait for success. Create, create it. You have to create this way to have success in the future. You have to build the opportunity to have success. How can you do it? We propose our recommendation 
is to develop this long-term planning, to have this map for success. This is the information of what to do, how to do, when to do, every step for gymnastics progression. This is an example from the British Gymnastics Federation. They divide the whole life of the gymnast in these six steps, from the fundamentals to the retirement of the gymnast. And they, have, they give recommendations for doing the best work as possible in every different phase of training. So you are trying to develop as much as possible your gymnast. So you will have better chance to achieve the high performance with possibilities of having results. This moment, the uh, principal ideas that I want to, to give you is that planning, it's as far as way as improvisation. As much as you, have, you can have under control, it's better to know the results. So you have to plan every step of the progression of the gymnast. Because this could be a very good information for coaches, for clubs. They have this orientation of the work and this orientation for a good quality work. Because we are not um, waiting for this casualty work. We are trying to define the specific quality work for high performance. And the target of this plan is obtaining the optimum development of the gymnast, but not only in high performance. You must to develop as much as possible the capacity of the gymnast at every age. According to Glasgow, success is simple. Is do what's right, the right way, and at the right time. So if we translate this to planning, planning success is knowing what to do, how to do, and when to do it. You have to answer these three questions to define your plan. Your plan we will define what the coach must do, how he can do it, and when. In this second part of our talk, we are going to, to talk about uh, basics of uh, planning. And I want to begin with, with this, uh, this question. What's your definition of, of success? Because uh, all of us uh, relate uh, success with uh, competition results. And I think it's not only the definition of success. I prefer to say that success is uh, always doing your, your best. Why? Because all of us don't have the same opportunity of, of having uh, competition results. Competition results is uh, specifically related with your possibilities of training. Not all countries have the same possibilities of having international results. Not all clubs have the same possibilities of having competition results. So success must be not related always with these competition results. You must know what are your limits. And if you always trying to do your best, I think you are a successful coach. In this case, in this talk, we are trying to provoke this success. Sometimes you realize that uh, doing your maximum, doing your best, you couldn't achieve your goals. It's really because goals is not related only with uh, what the coach can do. 
Success is related with the possibilities that you have to train, with the facility you have, with the materials we have, with the team coach you have. So this is the reality. And from this reality, you have to build your goals. And what happens if you are doing your best, but you are not close to your goals? This is a mistake of planning because your goals are bigger than your possibilities. You must be in the reality. You have, uh, you need your feet on the floor and say, what are my possibilities? And the possibilities are real. You have this material, you have this facility, you have this uh, team coach, you have this economical support, you have, you have to analyze this situation. And according to this situation, you must define your goals. Sometimes your goals are bigger than your possibilities. A good plan, you have this balance between possibilities and goals. So, but all of us want to improve our goals and say, if I work harder, I will achieve these goals. It's not all related with your work. There are a lot of variables that define the possibilities that you have. So, planning must start from the reality. From the reality, you have to analyze your possibilities because your performance level is directly related with your training environment. Then I am going to, to speak a bit this training environment. What is training environment? And also one principal idea, if you want to increase the level of your goals, you have to change your training environment. And not, it's not only related with, your, with the work of the coach. A training environment includes different variables. The first is the characteristics of the performer, the characteristics of the gymnast. We need talent, gymnasts. Not all gymnasts are prepared, have the characteristics to be included in a high level program. So you have to analyze if you have the adequate gymnasts for this incredible goal, for high performance goal. And also, the characteristics of the training, of the practice, facilities that you, you got, materials. This is related with the capacity of having more or less quality in your training. And also, the characteristics of the social environment. We are in a society. We need the support of our society. We need the support of families. We, know, we need the support of our federation. So we must be included in this society according to its characteristics. The training environment is directly related with the performance, the possibilities. We began speaking about the characteristics of the performance, the characteristics of the gymnast. And as I say, not all gymnasts are prepared for high performance. And high performance is not the only way to develop gymnastics. There are a lot of kinds of different gymnastics. So we are only speaking about a little pieces piece of gymnastics, gymnastics for competition, gymnastics for international level. In this case, you need gymnasts with talent, with a specific physical condition, with a specific anthropometric and physio physiological characteristics, with a specific psychological and personality. This is a gymnast talent. And you have to ask yourself, 
Do your, you, do your gymnasts have the, the capacity for the goals you plan? Do you have talent gymnasts for this, um, this incredible level? If you don't have a talent gymnasts, one of uh, the main objectives is to find the talent. And also, there are two types or two philosophies in this uh, modern sport. The natural selection, what is natural selection? Is waiting because all the gymnasts uh, who have the best characteristics will grow with the increasing level of the program. You will lose a lot of gymnasts during this process. Only the best gymnasts will uh, achieve the high performance level. You don't do nothing. The system will uh, select the best gymnasts to go to the top. But this system is, uh, is only related with countries that have an incredible number of, of gymnasts uh, in the basic phases. You can, you can lose gymnasts during this process. But um, this is a specific countries that can have this natural selection. Most of countries don't have this uh, quantity of gymnasts practicing gymnastics at the beginning uh, stages. So it's a very good idea to have this talent selection philosophy, to select with a specific uh, criteria, with a specific scientific criteria, which, what talent? Do you have and then select these gymnasts for this high performance plan so you have to decide but you need a plan what is the plan of your country waiting for a natural selection or trying to create the situation of having the best gymnasts in a specific plan for develop this gymnast. These are two examples from the British Gymnastics Federation and Canadian Gymnastics Federation. I think uh, they have a, a very good long-term planning. It's an example. And you can uh, find this information in internet. It's open access. So, Talent identification is inside this type of planning. They have planned all the whole life of the gymnast from the beginning to the retirement. And then there is a specific moment during the develop of this uh, plan when they include this talent identification. But talent identification is only related with this part of the plan. The plan related with the high performance. But look, the plan is open to gymnastics for life, gymnastics for recreational objectives. So, talent identification is related with find what gymnasts are the best for this high performance plan. But you must be open to another kind of practicing gymnastics. Gymnastics is so big. There are a lot of uh, ways of practicing gymnastics. But if you want to develop this high performance level, try to select the adequate gymnast. Um, two important ideas related with uh, talent. The first idea, Talent identification is a process. It's not only to have uh, some test to, to select which gymnasts have talent. After this, you need a talent development plan. If you don't have this plan to develop the talent, don't do the identification and the detection of the, of the talent. 
because you don't have anything to offer, especially to this talent gymnast. This talent identification program is related with this long-term planning. You select the talent because you have something to offer, especially for this talent gymnast. And also, don't confuse between, I have a very uh, incredible gymnast, a strange gymnast, a speed gymnast. It's, it's, it's not a real talent, a, bi a biological talent. Talent is related with morphological evaluation, with motor and perceptive evaluation, with psychological and social evaluation, and also the biological. So you have to measure all these different areas of the gymnast to say that it's a real talent. So talent is, relation, is related, excuse me, with this areas and you have to evaluate all this to say this is a talent for high performance gymnastics talent is a very incredible uh, topic but i want only to to give these specific ideas it's not enough with the talent identification you need a talent program for develop this talent and um, be sure that you have a real talent and the second part of this training environment is the characteristics of training. Here we are going to talk about the sport facilities and materials, the practice quality, and the practice quantity, the amount of practice that is needed to develop this plan. First, sport facilities and materials. Especially in gymnastics, we need a specific high quality apparatus. We need very good uh, high, high quality facilities and materials and um, if you improve if you move forward this part if you improve the quality of your facilities the quality of your materials you increase the quantity of the materials you will move forward the quality of your training possibilities the possibilities of learning will increase and you will have a decrease in the risk of injury so you must work for improving the quality of the facilities and the materials and one important question is can we have as, uh, as a country, as a federation, these high quality facilities? Because it's related with the possibilities, the real possibility of the club, the real possibility of the federation. Uh, how many facilities can we have with these specific characteristics? We are looking for the high quality facilities and high quality materials. And it could be public or private we can have these high quality facilities for a club or we can only uh, have one or two national centers with these characteristics because one uh, principal objective one principal goal of the federation at the beginning must be having these high quality facilities to have the opportunity of develop this high quality program and it's related with the model of the country. There are a different model, but you have to define what is the model of your country. I give you some examples. Model A, you can have a, a national center with a permanent uh, concentration and clubs that are including in this plan, they are working with this plan with the national team. So you have to define the, the criteria to be included in the national center. And from the national center, you select the gymnast to go to the international competition. So you need that this national center at this club have the facilities and materials 
for develop your plan. Another possibility, model B. You have your national center, but no permanent concentration. It could be. And you have strong clubs in your country, so your plan is developed in these uh, specific clubs. And then you have a specific concentrations in, where you select the gymnast for the international events. It's another model. Or another possibility is having a national center for concentration, for doing a specific stage. Then having different regional centers, it's very interesting to have this uh, specific regional center because it's near to the families and also clubs that are working in this national plan. So you have to define in this case which are the criteria to go to this regional center and then what are the criteria to go to the international events. And another possibility, not having a national center, having regional centers and clubs that are working for these regional centers. You have to define the criteria to go to these regional centers and the criteria to go to international events. All doing all your plan, develop all your plan with the clubs of your country. You have to define a plan that can be developed in these, these clubs. So the, the result of your plan is related with the quality of the work that this club can be done. In this case, you have to define the criteria to go to international events. There are a lot of possibilities. These are only examples. The best is that you develop your own model as country, as federation, because you know your possibilities. You know the quality of your facilities. You know how can you develop the plan. So these are possibilities. Then is your step. You must develop your plan. And to increase the quality of the practice, you need a high quality coach team. Coaches for physical preparation, for technical preparation, for ballet, for trampoline, they must be as good as possible. If you have a high quality team, you will have a high quality practice because practice is related also with the quality of your coach. You could have the best facility of the world, but if you, know, if you don't have good coaches, there is not a high quality practice. So for, for having good coaches, you have to define an education program, specific educational program for coaches. And also a very interesting idea, when you define the, the national plan, you have to define what is the role of every coach in this plan. Coaches from the different clubs that want to be included in this plan must, be, must have a, a special role. As coach of one club, I have this role in the national plan. I know what I am doing. And I know the objective, the target. I am working for this. So this is include the coaches in the objective of this plan. So this will increase the motivation of the coaches. Coaches know that he's working for something specific, for one objective, for my country objective, for my federation objective for high performance. So recommendation, 
try to have the best coaches who know their role in the national plan and are motivated by the objective. It's easy, but it must be exactly planned. Another variable is the quantity of hours that uh, I have to spend training. Because um, in gymnastics, we have a, a high volume of training week after week. So this is an interesting question. How many hours I have to spend every week uh, training with my high level gymnast? There are some possibilities of having information about it. This is from the internet. This is from gymnastics zone and it's related with the different levels of competition in USA and they say that at 11 10 they spend an average of 18 hours per week training. Uh, from the British Gymnastics Federation you can see that uh, there is an increase of the number of uh, hours it's between uh, six hours at the beginning are around 26 hours uh, in high level. Uh, on also, in the Canadian Gymnastics Federation, you see that it's this increasing of the number of uh, hours, step by step. High performance, it's related with uh, 30 hours uh, per week training. And also, from the AFIG, uh, you have this, um, this information in the age group program that is developed by the AFIG, and they recommend this number of uh, hours step by step. As we can see, we must um, increase the number of hours year after year. But in high performance, how many hours I have to spend to have the possibilities of success? Because success is, uh, is related with how, how many hours can you train? We can see that there is between 25 and 40 hours per week. It could be a reference for the high level gymnastic training. Average is between 30, 35 hours. But one important idea is that more hours you train, more risk of having injuries. You could train 40 hours uh, per week, but you will have a high risk of uh, having injuries. So it depends of um, your uh, facilities. It depends of your recovery process. You can increase this number of hours, but, but having in your mind that you're increasing the risk of having an injury. So around 30, 35 hours, it's the average of hours per week. And the third part of this training environment is the characteristics of the social environment. Because you could, you could go alone, like the lone ranger, but you will have problems because you are in, inside a society. You can go without the rules of the society. You couldn't go out from the social media. You couldn't go out from your culture. So you are included in a society. And you, you need the support of the society. You need the support of the families. You know, the uh, coaches need the support of the families. The families must support the gymnasts. The federation must support coaches. Coaches must support gymnasts. These are social relations. So we must have uh, include these characteristics, these variables inside my plan. 
that's because it's not a good idea to copy and paste and paste one uh, plan from one country to another country because the rules are different the behaviors are different so you have to develop your own plan according to your society and who is included in in this plan a lot of people must be included in this long-term plan from national federation the regional federations the gymnastics clubs coaches and gymnasts families supporting partners and other professionals medical staff biomechanics etc etc and they are persons they have relation each other so you have to plan which is the role of the coaches in this plan which is the role of the families in this plan which is the role of the clubs in this plan because they have social relation and you have to you need an answer for this relation between each other because you need the support the social support for your plan if the society support your plan you ha will have more chances for success and also psychological support motivation motivation for the coaches motivation for the gymnasts this is very important because this is a long term plan this is not a plan from one year it's several years of hard work so you need this specific support for this long time and also be sure that you have this economic support and not only for one or two years you need economical support for this long-term plan how long are you planning for four years six years eight years have you a specific support economical support for this long-term plan and also analyze your culture analyze your beliefs analyze your rituals behavior your uh, attitude it's not the same one long-term plan in europe in asia in america this is different different situation different facilities different uh, way of life so try to develop your plan in the context of your country and then in this part of the of the talk we are going about uh, we are going to talk about what to do how to do it and when to do it what to do what to do is related and specific with the technical elements the skills that do, you have to develop during the whole life of, of the gymnast and the physical preparation because it's not the same physical preparation for a girl or a boy uh, at eight years that this physical preparation for uh, 20 years old gymnast this is completely different so you must give this information what to do at every age of the gymnast and also this technical uh, element progression must be related with the competition rules if i have to develop this element at, at this age when i have to compete it's very clear very interesting to have the, the same objectives the same goals this is from the australian gymnastics federation i have the opportunity to go to, to australia incredible country and they have this on the floor in the national center in canberra this is the skills the bold skills and related with the level at what level do you have to begin with this element this is very interesting for coaches to know exactly what level EOS is working and what are the skills that the gymnast must develop this is a plan 
for the future. And also, you have this, um, this organization, this type of ordering the different skills in the age group program of the all different disciplines. You have it uh, in the FIG website, in the educational program, in the age group program. You have all this information from women's artistic gymnastics, men artistic gymnastics, acrobatics gymnastics, rhythmic gymnastics, aerobical gymnastics, trampoline gymnastics, and parkour. You have this kind of information. You have all the different skills that you have uh, to develop with your gymnast and related with the age. And look, when you have to begin the uh, learning of this element, during how many years you have to develop this skill, and when you have to be consolidated this skill and could be included in your routine because there is a, a period of time of learning so this is a specific plan for the future and you know exactly when to begin the learning process of one element and this is for men's artistic gymnastics for women's artistic gymnastics you have this example of uh, an event bars for acrobatics gymnastics, for aerobics gymnastics, this is the group C jumps, for trampoline gymnastics, for tumbling, for rhythmics, and for parkour. You have all the information on the FIG website. And important, there is an, uh, a relation, a direct relation between this information and the competition system, the competition rules. So if you have defined these different phases, you have to relate this information with the competition rules. And also you have this information in the age group program of the AFIG for the different disciplines. You have this a recommendation for performing this specific competition for women's artistic gymnastics, men artistic gymnastics, rhythmics, trampoline, aerobic, acrobatic, and parkour. So you, you have this proposal, you have this information. You can use it, you can apply in your country this age group program. It's a program for the future. It's a program for develop all the skills of the gymnast and having the possibility of achieve the international level with a complete develop of the skills of the gymnast. Oh, you can um, develop your own program. You have this information. You can have your own idea, own ideas, and develop your own program for your country. And also, you have the information of the technical progression. Also, the information for the physical preparation for progression. Year after year, phase after phase. It's very uh, important to, to know how to develop a strength at the different ages. It's not the same to develop a strength with 10 years old or with a senior gymnast. It's the same capacity but you have to develop a completely different work. Uh, how to do it? Inside your plan, you expose what to do. So you have to develop this program, you have to develop this skill, you have to develop this strength training program, but the coach could say, uh, yes, you say, I have to develop this, but how? You must include inside your, your plan, how to develop these technical uh, skills and recommendations for the physical preparation. Also, the FIG have this information, especially in the uh, website that is related with the age group program, 
you have the manuals and you have also the link to the YouTube big educational channel. And you have there uh, specific videos to develop the program for women's artistic gymnastics, to develop the program for men's artistic gymnastics and for rhythmic gymnastics. This is a, an example for, from YouTube. And you have plenty, a lot of videos for develop all the different apparatus of men's artistic gymnastics. And also for rhythmic gymnastics. You have this is free access on YouTube. And also the FIG have the FIG Academy with three levels for coaches. And they have a plan, a technical plan that is developed in every level. In this level, coaches develop the methodology to achieve these skills. So it's not only say what to do, it's saying how to do it. It's educational program for the coaches. And also remember that you have to give this information for the technical develop of the program and for the physical preparation how to do the physical preparation at every age. And when to do it, this is very important because you have to define different phases during the whole life of all the gymnasts. These phases are related with two factors. First is the sensitive periods, periods in where it is more effective to do some specific work in some specific capacity. These are the sensitive periods and also the human motor development. So you have to adapt the training to the possibilities of the gymnast according to his or her age. This is an example of the uh, sensitive periods. Not all capacities have the same answer at the different ages. So you can see that aerobic endurance and reaction time, you could uh, begin with these capacities earlier. And another capacities, you have to wait, specific uh, maximal strength or anaerobic capacities you have to work because it's related with maturation. So when you are going to develop, when you are going to design the different phases, take care of these sensitive periods to have a specific recommendation for physical preparation. And also you have to analyze the uh, motor evolution of human, human motor evolution. There are different research, there are different information, Piaget's Ericsson stage of uh, development. Uh, this, this could give you information for how to uh, develop the learning process because there are different stages and the, there are different moments of, for learning. With this, you have to define these different phases. You have six phases in the, uh, in the British gymnastics uh, long-term planning. You have seven different uh, phases in the Canadian Gymnastics uh, Federation long-term planning. And you have to decide at which age you want to develop every phase. Also, the FIG have developed uh, his own program and they have developed different stages according to the age of the gymnast. And in the final part of this presentation is the part for a specific recommendation. The first one, if you want to design this long-term plan, you must include from the beginning all the different specialists, all the different persons that will be involved in the plan. You must include in this round table, coaches, 
federations, supporting partners, families, psychologists, medical staff, all persons that can support, that can uh, give information for a better design of your plan. And of course, first, you have to study your possibilities as a country. You have to analyze your characteristics, your specific characteristics. You have talent gymnasts, you have good quality uh, coaches, good quality facilities, which is your model, uh, what are the social environment that will have, uh, will give support to your plan. You have to balance your possibilities with your goals. You want to improve your goals, change your possibilities, change your training environment. And always remember that your plan must be specific and in the context of your society. It's not a good idea to copy and paste, paste one plan from another country exactly to your country. Oh, I have uh, this information from this. Try to translate, try to adapt to your culture. And be clear with the target of this plan. This is a long-term plan. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be in 10 years? This is a very interesting question for coaches, for clubs, for federation, which is your level now? You are happy with your level? You want to increase your level? So something you have to change. If you want to increase your goals, if you want to increase your chance of having a success at the international level, perhaps you have to change your training environment. Perhaps you have to change your model. Perhaps you have to change uh, your plan. And define, define your model, a specific model. And with a specific role for all the people that are included in the plan, specific for the coach. Specific role for all the coaches that want to collaborate with your plan. And also design what to do, when to do, and how to do it. This is a real plan. You have this map for coaches. You have your map for high performance level. And include during the development of the process, some moments for evaluation, some moments for having this specific information of the evolution of your uh, program. Because first, you are going to design your plan. After this, you have to develop the plan. But during this long-term planning, you have to assess. For what? Looking for mistakes, looking for errors. If you detect one mistake, you have to redesign your plan. Your plan must be open to this change. If you detect one mistake, you have to change your plan and adapt to this new situation open your mind and try to adapt to new situations. And final ideas. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. I don't say that all plans are perfect. But if you have a plan and don't have the results you are expecting for, you can check the plan change something and you will change the result. 
But if you don't have any plan, where is the mistake? If you don't have your goals, you couldn't review all the process. So it's necessary to have this plan, this process to check. You have to change something. You have designed, you can choose exactly what to change. But if you, have, if you haven't got a plan, it's impossible to change. And all this topic is related with this idea. Increase your chance for success. Don't wait for success. Success is building in the work of every day. It's building by the work that you have done year after year. So if you know what to do, how to do, and when to do it, you will increase the change of success of your federation, of your country, or your club. Okay? So thank you very much. I think the best, the easier part of this topic is to expose this, this talk. The harder uh, thing is to develop all this idea because it's related with the work of a lot of people, a lot of persons, and it's a, a really hard work. But it's, I think it's a very, very good idea for the future to increase your possibilities of having success. So thank you very much. And uh, now we have uh, minutes for questions and discussions. Ignacio, thank you so very much for this great overview, this uh, comprehensive overview of what is involved in planning. I think you know very well how much I really, really think that every aspect of a gymnast development has to be planned. It cannot be random. It cannot be haphazard. And so thank you for this. Um, thank you. The comment I think you've heard and we've all heard many times from coaches is, oh, I don't have time for all this planning. My answer, my answer to them is, well, if you don't have time to do it right the first time, when will you have time to do it again? Yes. So it, it leads me to, to a, a couple of interesting questions, I think. We often hear this phrase of no plan survives contact with the enemy. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have all learned to cope with the enemies of illness, the enemy of injury, the enemy of a changed coat of points. But now in this time of COVID, we have a whole new enemy. We have closed gyms. We have postponed world championships and Olympics. We have perhaps lost opportunities to be an Olympian because of the new eligible gymnasts. So what do you recommend that the coaches do at this time to keep motivated? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a difficult, difficult question, Harry, because it's a, a really new situation. Nobody knows about this uh, situation. But um, the principal idea is that traditional methodologies don't have an answer for this new situation. So we have to create a new opportunity. We have to create a new uh, time. This time, must be uh, organized uh, related with objectives. What can we do with our gymnast now? Because also we don't have a, a, a exactly time for develop this phase. Probably we will have at the end of the year, perhaps we could have competition, but perhaps it could be impossible. So, we have to develop this specific uh, period according to specific goals, specific objectives that we, we can develop at home. I think this could be a very good period for recover and for develop basic, basic training, basic pre uh, physical preparation, um, basic uh, elements basic motor skills for gymnastics. The first idea is to try to recover as much as possible all the little injuries of the gymnast. You have time now. 
So when the gymnast came back to the gym, be sure that he is as good as possible. And you have to analyze your situation. What can the gymnast do at home? Physical preparation is very simple. You have to adapt to different uh, exercises and you can develop, I think, a very good physical preparation program. But take care because we are doing a lot of physical preparation, but it is not a specific preparation because when we are coming back to the gym, we are going to be uh, against a high impacts with floor rebounds. And I think uh, the structures of the gymnast, ligament, muscles, bones, are not prepared for this specific impact. We are doing general preparation. But when you came back to the gym, take a transition period to adapt the structures of the gymnast to the new situation. And also, we can do a specific work of uh, basic uh, skills, improving the position of the gymnast, improving the uh, balance, improving some specific uh, motor skills, jumping, landing better. We have to go to the basics. What are the basics of gymnastics? Jumping, landing, twist. So develop these basics. All the uh, higher uh, skills are related with these basics. So you are develop the high performance or the high level skills in the beginning with the increasing of the uh, execution of the basics. So this period, it's a recovery period and a basic training. Um, the last idea, try to have different phases, different waves, different undulating training with the training load. Don't do the same every week. You must have uh, weeks for a very uh, high level intensity in physical preparation and then include a transitional period for develop some skills, some technical, don't have a routine, a liner routine. Try to, try to have this undulating uh, training to have your uh, gymnast motivated and uh, try to uh, combine physical preparation and technical preparation. Well, that is a pretty comprehensive answer, so thank you for that. I, I would probably add artistic preparation also into that time period. I, yes, I know you haven't forgotten that. And always, I, I, I forgot. Uh, it's time for coaches, for preparing the future. You have now a lot of time to uh, have a look, information, in books, in, on internet, so it's we, we don't have normally this time for looking for new ideas. So it's time for develop uh, your uh, knowledge as coach. And also uh, it's uh, time for uh, looking for psychological, psychological for the gymnast to improve their capacity, to improve their uh, objectives, their future objectives, to have time now to develop these specific areas. Wonderful. I think we have time maybe for one more question. Uh, over the years, I've had a chance to speak with many champion gymnasts, and then they retire. And the common theme among them is they have gone from hero to zero. And my question then is, how does a coach prepare a gymnast for this eventuality, this certainty? Should coach, coaches learn? how to include retirement planning in their responsibilities, and what educational information can you recommend, if there is any? Mm -hmm. um, the first idea is that uh, the retirement uh, will happen. As coaches, we must know that um, there is a moment when the gymnast 
will say to you that it's the moment for the final moment of my career. So we have to prepare this, but uh, with a long-term planning, because you know that this moment will appear. And how can we pre be prepared for this? Uh, having the opportunity of develop the, the gymnast during training and with educational possibilities. Have the possibility of uh, develop his or her career. And we have to study this possibility inside my plan. Because it's impossible to uh, have all your time inside the gym and after the final part of the career, want to uh, begin studying. You have to include in your plan this possibility of develop as gymnast and develop as professional in different areas. But you have to plan. You have to plan how many hours have, uh, I need to train. It's possible to combine this high level performance with studying at the university. It's not um, only uh, one gymnast, it's a plan. You need to define this inside your long-term plan. And also, you as a gymnastic federation, you need to give a specific um, areas in which the gymnast could develop after be a gymnast. He could be or she could be a very good coach. He could be a very good judge. She, she, will, she could uh, work with the federation. So there are two principal ideas. First, to combine during your plan the possibility of uh, studying during her career as gymnast. And then after the end of the career, giving opportunities to be included in gymnastics as a professional in different areas. Thank you. Thank you again, Ignacio. And uh, I think that's all the questions for now. I think there will be an opportunity online for people to ask questions. So I thank you so very, very much for this really interesting presentation. And also, thank you very much for this new opportunity. Thank you, Harley, and thank you, DFAG. And I'd like to also thank all the viewers and all the participants in this seminar. So I'd invite you to not miss the last seminar. You'll see it on the screen now. The last seminar is exactly one week next Thursday from this time. And this one is about what I think is maybe the most important topic of all, how a child grows, understanding this growth, and what that means for intensive training during the maturational process. Dr. Keith Russell will speak about growth and maturation and what that means. I also at the end here want to acknowledge the work of the Education Commission that has stepped up far beyond its advisory role to help organize these events. Thank you to also to Anis Saud, who is hiding in the background somewhere, but he has put all this together. And hi hiding even more in the background is the FIG media and the IT departments who have been invaluable to make this possible. And of course, once again, I'd like to thank Ignacio Grande for his wonderful presentation, and even more so because he did this in his second language. Good luck to all gymnasts. Good luck to all coaches. Stay safe. <laughs>